While most of our image editing is done in an RGB color space, luminosity masks are grayscale or black and white. To get the gray tones in your mask to match the tonal values in your RGB images, there are some color preferences that you'll need to get set. If you don't, it's not the end of the world. The mask tones will just be off from the image tones slightly. If you're already a TK panel user, then you probably already have your gray and RGB spaces matched up. Let's begin with the actual color space that you edit in. For RGB imaging, there are three color spaces that are commonly used. sRGB, Adobe RGB 1998, and Profoto RGB. sRGB, or standard RGB, is the smallest color space and it's the color space used on the web. Adobe RGB is a larger color space containing many more colors than sRGB. Profoto RGB is the largest color space of the three and the only one that can encompass all of the colors that might be possibly recorded in a RAW file. Arguments can be made for working in any one of these color spaces depending on what you intend to do with your images. For example, if your images will only be viewed on the web or sRGB monitors, then editing in sRGB might be a good choice for you. If you plan to print images or view them on wide gamut monitors, then Adobe RGB or Profoto RGB makes more sense. I can't say which one is the right one for you, but I can share the settings that I use and why. Lightroom and Camera Raw already use the largest color space and you can't alter that. In Photoshop, I continue to work and save my TIFF files with the Profoto RGB color space so that I can retain as much of the original color information for as long as possible in my workflow. I only downsample to a smaller color space when it's necessary for certain outputs. For example, my office printer supports the Profoto RGB color space so I can print to that without converting my images. For printing with labs that specify or require the Adobe RGB color space, I first make a copy of my master file and I convert the copy to the Adobe RGB color space before uploading. And for accurate viewing of my images on the web or in email, I first make copies and then I convert those copies to the sRGB color space. Raw files themselves don't have a color space assigned to them. A color space only gets assigned to your image when it's opened in Photoshop for editing. When you do that, the RAW file is converted to an editable image type, such as JPEG, TIFF, or PSD, and the color space is assigned then. So whatever color space you choose to edit in, your RAW image software is the first place where you assign it. In Lightroom, on a PC, you go to Edit, Preferences, External Editing, or on a Mac, it would be the Lightroom menu, Preferences, External Editing, and there you choose your color space and your bit depth. And for me, like I said, I set Profoto RGB and the 16-bit bit depth. If you use Camera Raw as your raw image converter, you can click the settings at the bottom of the Camera Raw window, and there you can select both the color space and the bit depth. The color space that you select in Lightroom or Camera Raw for external editing should also be your working RGB space in Photoshop. And to get your luminosity mask tonal values to exactly match your RGB values, you set the gray gamma space to match. So go to Edit Color Settings on a PC or go to the Photoshop menu and Color Settings on a Mac. And here, you'll select the RGB color space that matches the setting that you made in Lightroom, Camera Raw, or other RAW software. In my case, again, that's Profoto RGB. And the matching gray gamma space for Profoto RGB is gray gamma 1.8. If you're using Adobe RGB 1998 as your working RGB space, the matching gray space is gray gamma 2.2. And if you're using sRGB, then the matching gray space is S gray. It's important to note that the gray gamma settings in Photoshop and your monitor gamma settings are not the same thing, so don't change your monitor's gamma. 
Sometimes you may want to use luminosity mass on an image that is in a different color space than your working color space. For example, my image files from many years ago are in the Adobe RGB 1998 space, and I also have some family images that I took in my camera in the sRGB color space as JPEGs. When editing images that aren't in your normal working color space, you can either leave your RGB and gray space settings as they are, and just know that your luminosity mass tones will be a little bit off. You can also change your settings to match the image. If you plan to change settings, it's helpful to save presets for the three different pairings so that you can quickly make the switch. To save a preset, select the matching settings, and then click Save. And then give that preset a name that indicates what those settings are, and click OK. And then select the Adobe RGB 1998 and Gray Gamma 2.2, and save those as a preset. And then finally, select sRGB and S Gray and give it the right name and save that as a preset. And just remember that if you do switch settings, don't forget to switch them back. So now that your RGB and gray gamma settings are matched, in the next chapter, we'll take a look at how to set up a custom Photoshop workspace for the TK8 panel.